So hello, I am Nilesh. So let us go into the more details. Actually, authors of this paper have used the imaginary data set. Imaginary data set contains around uh, millions of uh, images with uh, more than 20,000 categories. But here we have nothing to do with those categories. We directly pass the images as an input to the, our convolutional neural network architecture. Actually, authors have uh, represented the image input like x is equal to x1, x2, xn. X and n is a very big number like millions, maybe percent something millions. So once we pass those inputs to the convolutional neural network architecture, it may contain two to four stacks of CNN. So each of the stacks will contain one at least one C, uh, convolution operations and then pulling operations like that. So it uh, depends upon uh, your problem and your architecture design. So now authors have represented that theta will represent the parameter, network parameter of all those stacks of the entire convolutional neural network. And then they have used f theta to represent the convolution operations. So when we take f theta xn, then it will give the feed forward output. for image xn and the benefit that we will get that output will have fixed dimensionality now the next part of this algorithm is we we take all the n million uh, one events, uh, one we will take all the n images pass it through the convolutional neural network generated the feed forward output those are fixed dimensional fixed dimensionality vectors in the numeric form then we will apply the k means clustering algorithm so the k means clustering algorithm uh, suppose here just for understanding suppose here k is 3 so it converted entire images into three clusters. Now we will apply them pseudo labeling. Like cluster C1 will map to class C1, cluster C2 will map to class C2, cluster C3 will map to class C3. Pseudo, pseudo mapping kind of thing. So here the important thing will be to maintain the quality of clusters. To maintain the quality of clusters, we will use one cost function. So once we get the output from those clusters, we start this part as a classifier because we already have label training data, means training input labels, pseudo labels for each of the classes. So we start training this, apply the back propagation. So when we apply the back propagation, mini batch gradient descent algorithm, then what will happen? We need another cost function so that we can properly get the best learning. So in summary, we can say that it is very important that all such kind of architectures, we use two different loss functions. One loss function for unsupervised leveling, one loss function for network, deep learning network, which use those unsupervised leveling. So, now go through the first part, like loss function for clustering. So, authors have used this as a loss function for clustering, like this. Here, we will go through one by one to understand this. This is actually centroid of K means clustering. So I 
I assume that uh, you are already aware of k-means clustering. In the k-means clustering, we identify some k-centroid points in such a way that all the points in the same clusters will be uh, most similar or most nearest to those centroid points. So, this is our centroid matrix. So, k represents the number of clusters and d represents the dimensionality of those uh, clusters. So, suppose we have take the cluster C1, then it will, uh, means uh, our uh, column C1 will represent the all points of cluster C1, column C2 will represent the clusters for point C2 like that. So, such kind of matrix it is there. So, what is N? We already know that N is the total number of images. And now, F theta xn, we already discussed this. The next part is, Cyn, C is the centroid point, and Yn. So, what is the meaning of this? So, this means that assignment of a given image to a particular centroid point, C1, C2, cluster centroid like C1, C2, in such a way that its distance with respect to other points will be minimum to the centroid point. So, this is the thing that is achieved. Here, Yn is, a mem is actually 0 or 1, can be 0 or 1. That's why it shows the relations Yn transpose 1k equal to 1. This is the main reason. So, this is a kind of one hot kind of representation, so look like that. Now, if you look these equations, you will find that it looks like expectations maximization. Like this part represents the expectations, like uh, identifying uh, cluster centroids such a way that we have a minimum uh, distance as assignment of uh, images to the cluster centroid in such a way that it should have a minimum distance with respect to other cluster centroid, like that. And here, identifying the cluster centroids in the entire data in a such a that it will have minimum distance with respect to assigned points means maximum similarity with the assigned points with for each of the centroids that's why we i am saying that it looks like it uh, means uh, expectation maximization kind of thing so after solving this part you will get uh, this y star n means uh, according to the author this is actually optimal assignment of all points uh, that you will get and even at the same time you will get the four centroid matrix also but there is no use of centroid matrix because we are just using the uh, means, uh, clusters as a pseudo labels so after some iterations i think you will get the best uh, clusters now, the next part is uh, use that cluster as a pseudo level and then apply the deep learning network. So, this part with this pseudo leveling is a deep learning network. Now, apply the cost functions for that. So, deep learning network cost functions. So, according to the author, the main motive of the entire learning is to optimize this problem means trying to get the minimum loss by learning the best theta parameters and neuron weights here n is the total number of images and l is actually negative uh, logs of mix so n is a negative log logs of mix so you may wonder that why we are using negative logs of mix why even why logs of mix so what happens when we train such kind of network having so much uh, means uh, points of fluctuations 
you will get a lot of value which are which may be very low in uh, value the logs of max generally prevents value going that much low and just thus it helps in getting the better computation and other thing is several times it deviates from the actual computation means uh, where you can say that we should apply some penalty because it is not following the rule means not following or not helping us in convergence so in that case it will increases that gap so this is the main reason of using the log softening so so that's why i am thinking that the main reason behind the negative log softening by the authors is just because in every iterations your clusters point will not be same so it is changing and to manage those fluctuations they have used such kind of uh, loss function so this is my thinking so once we have this classifier now what is this so gw is actually a convolutional parameterized classifier which contains all the feed forward operations and the label that we have pseudo label here why and the project to pseudo label so x1 z2 c3 like that so after some iterations when it converges we will get some model suppose we represent it like m1 so how we can use that m1 either like a traditional deep learning model or like a transfer learning so now you may assume you may you may think that if you go through other papers with uh, deep clustering or self supervised classifiers then you will find that convolvnet is not there some ar arrangement is a little different like encoder decoder architecture and after encoder you can see that such similar kind of arrangement in two different loss functions similarly when you go through some different variations in the convolvnet in the place of convolvnet convolvnet you will get some uh, gain kind of architecture but again same unsupervised additions with two loss functions so in majority of such kind of algorithms i found the similarity in the architecture and uh, concepts so this is uh, just for classification there may be some a lot of different different uh, deep learning task other than classification so there will be a lot of different ways to achieve those kind of task so hope in the future i will try to cover that part also so thanks for watching